You ever heard this? This is so funny. <laughs> Keith, take it away. All right. I, uh, I too have to stand up here, but um, I, you know, it, it's tough to follow that because she really is one of the most passionate people that I've ever had the pleasure and privilege of, of working with. She's been on the program many, many times before, and um, it's, she hit the nail on the head, and Dan hit the nail on the head. I actually said this on air today, um, kind of drew some interesting emails. Why do I need an AR-15? Why do I need a Glock 17? Why do I need to own guns? Why did Rosa Parks need to sit at the front of the bus? That's it. You can explain that to me. Why did she need to? Think about that for a minute. Talking about fundamental rights. You know, it's interesting how progressives are always talking about their right to access health care. What about a woman's right to access a means of self-defense? I want to show you guys something. And my portion of the presentation here, I wanted to deal with numbers specifically. Because generally what happens is you don't hear a lot about firearms until there's an active shooter event. And then what happens when there's a school shooting? What happens when there's a workplace shooting? What happens when somebody walks into a movie theater and starts shooting the place up? What dominates the headlines? The 24-hour news cycle. Anybody? The gun. That's all you hear. That's all you hear. The smoke hadn't even cleared with the, uh, uh, the Steve Scalise shooting. And Terry McAuliffe is standing there calling for more gun control. This was a great gaffe. According to Terry McAuliffe, 93 million Americans a day are killed by gun violence. 93 million Americans a day. So we, we were dead years and years and years ago. All right, I want to get into this really quickly. I got a lot of information up here, um, and I'm going to try to go through this as succinctly as I can because there's a lot of information in here. Welcome to It Could Never Happen Here, USA. And think about this, whether we're talking about an active shooter situation or we're talking about a home invasion. How many people think that a home invasion could happen to them? Okay. You'd be amazed at how many people think it will never happen here, especially from the governmental aspect. Schools, it'll never happen here. It'll never happen here. We're just a high school in Colorado. It'll never happen here. We're just one of a thousand movie theaters across the country showing a midnight screening of The Dark Knight. Could never happen here. We're just an elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut. It could never happen here. We're just a one-room Amish schoolhouse in Nickel Mines, Pennsylvania. Anybody recall that yeah. tragedy? Yeah. Okay. It can happen anywhere, and I love this because, as I said earlier, We've learned a lot, but have we augmented our training? No, we really haven't, to be honest with you. We're very, very reactionary. We wait until something happens, and then we say, oh, now we have to augment. See, hindsight is always 2020. We have to augment our training programs. That's why I love this program. Whether it's a law enforcement program or a civilian program, I always open up with this cartoon, because I think it's really effective. This is something that I do in a, a program that I teach called Armed Citizen Response to an Active Shooter Event. This is the Hourglass of Death. This is entirely subjective. There is no right or wrong answer. But what Kim had hit on earlier, in terms of how long does it take 911 to get to your location versus how long does it take for you to be able to take decisive action. Now we'll just go through this really quickly and I'll explain exactly what this means. Shots fired, you start your clock. 